Welcome to the Sustainable Development E-Talks series co-hosted by CNS and Indian Institute of Management Indore. We have with us today, John Jandai, whom we lovingly call Joe, who is co-founder of Punpun Center for Self-Reliance in Northern Thailand. Joe believes in learning by doing and, and that there is not only one way of doing things. He has lived by example. He did the unthinkable. He left urban life and went to the middle of absolutely nowhere and tried living in a sustainable way. Joe will speak today on self-reliance and sustainable living. Good afternoon, sir. Indian Institute of Management in Dora extends its heartfelt welcome to you. We are indeed grateful to be blessed with your presence today on this platform and look forward to listening to you. Welcome, sir. Okay, now over to Joe. And uh, you, we want to listen to you about the experience of living a life which is simple as well as sustainable. Hello, Nong. Hello. 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 So uh, before I invite Joe to speak, I would like a very close friend of mine, Varuni uh, Kathithani. I always knew her as Nong. Wow. Mm -hmm. I want Nong to share her experience. And Nong comes from a uh, farming background and lives in Sankampang area, uh, close to Chiang Mai. And she works with differently abled aut autistic children. Over to you, Nong. Okay. Sawadi ha. Sawadi in Thai and Namaste in India. My name is Baluni Katemi. My nickname is Nong. I work in the educating autistic Chiang Mai Foundation in Chiang Mai, Thailand. First of all, I would like to thank you, Indian Institute of Management in the or IMM and CNS for inviting me to be a guest in this episode of Sustainable Development eTalk series featuring John Chandai. I'm thrilled to join the talk with Ajahn or Professor John Chandai. <laughs> Our Thai people call to respect him as Ajahn John. <laughs> he is the master for his career. I really love when he said, the life is so simple. <laughs> okay, let me introduce him shortly for you guys. Ajahn John is foremost a farmer who co-founded Pan Pan Center for Sale Reliance in Northern Thailand. Pan Pan is an organic farm, seed saving operation, and sustainable living and learning center. Besides, he is widely known about urgent builder homes in Thailand. This is short about him and for myself. My parents were a farmer, but they sent me to study in the expensive school in town since I was seven years old. They believe I will be in the good environment and have better life than them. I have only the school and tutoring school since I was young. I never helped my parents to do the farming. They want me to become the government official, but I'm not. Five years ago, I quit a job and gave myself a break. I want to do something different. I turned out to attend the workshop for Earthen Builder House of Ajahn John. I look at the other participants. Everyone devote to do that. They want to change their life, their career, and to be the farmer and make their own Earthen House. For the workshop, I have to build a house from the mud. In the meantime, we also learned to do the organic farm. I did what I have to do to follow the instructor. But when the time come for the arrange, put the mud brick to the wall, I can carry only three pieces of five kilogram mud brick. It's too heavy, five kilogram. Then I sat down and said, oh, I cannot do it anymore. It's too heavy. It's so exhausted for me. So I realized I'm what I did, I am good in the, I'm not good in the farmer. However, I admire respect farmer, farmer, especially Ajahn John a lot. He is good what he does. And SMS me, I am good at the document and paperwork. I think the best way and easy way and less work for me 
just buy organic vegetable and food from them. <laughs> Now I work with the orphans in Chiang Mai, Thailand. They plant, they plant rice and do organic farm to feed their children and teach their life skill and sufficiency economy. They don't buy rice and vegetable, but they can eat fresh and for year long. And I have friends in the mountain. They are Kalen people. I love to visit them often. Every time I visit them, the villager come to talk to me and give me variety of seasoning fruit. Sometimes I walk in the village and I can pick fruit and vegetable from their farm or their garden. The size is bigger than I have in the market and so fresh. They help each other taking care of another farm. They exchange their products. Every meal, they cook the fresh vegetable for their garden or neighborhood for me. It was so fresh and yummy. I just enjoy the food. One day, I lie down on the balcony and the man walked past at the house with his daughter and she had a bunch of litchi. I shout to them, I want to have some. Father said, you can come to my garden. I said, oh, thank you. Then I asked his father to deal. Uh, then he asked his daughter to deliver right at the balcony for me. I thought the village, uh, they are so cool. They work together. In the normal situation, I don't know what rice, fruit, and vegetable are most important for our life. I understand the sustainable and sufficiency economy clearly, but I don't really understand what it is. Just enjoy eating. However, during the epidemic of coronavirus, I see many people lack of food. In Thailand, people get into the queue for the food donation. Some people need to arrive there very early before time to be in the queue. If not, they don't have food to eat. They did not afraid of die of coronavirus, but they afraid of die of hunger. Then I realized the food is so important. I look at the orphan children and my current friends. They have rice, vegetable to eat every meal. They don't need to go to get in the queue to wait for the food donation. So how rich they are. Now I understand and see the value of sustainable, sufficient economy and crowded. I have tried to grow some vegetable at my home. I start small because I think if we want to change the world, we should start from ourselves. I think we don't need to do alone. We can do as a group to exchange product or technique to support each other or ask advice from Ajahn John. So the community will be strong. People won't suffer for lack of food anymore. And people will have more time and have more happiness. As Ajahn John said, life is so simple. Can I ask some more word? Life is so simple, but we make it complicated. But now I, I think I talk a lot. Now time up for me. I will hand over to Ajahn John. สวัสดีค่ะอาจารย์จนสวัสดีสวัสดีง่าย Hello everybody Hello. Yes uh, So it's uh, my name is John Chan Dai from Thailand So uh, mainly I working on seed saving right now working in the garden and then we start to work on a uh, new project also now we start a company called Tam Turakit or Fair Business. It's a, it's a kind of business that we want to make business fair for everybody. So we gather people together and then we raise a big amount of money to buy a resort in the southern of Thailand. So this resort is belong to 6,000 people now. So it's very fun that many people come together and help each other and then we we learning a lot so this is uh, so now i spend a lot of time at this at this resort to renovate the whole resort we try to use clay paint we try to uh organize new restaurant our restaurant have to be uh they call slow food restaurant like 
all the ingredient that we use in the kitchen, we need to know where it's come from. And then all the ingredients have to come from the, around in this area first. So we travel a lot every, everywhere in this province to find the sauce, to find anything. And then we just have a meeting with a uh, fisherman group that we want to get fish from them. And then we want to help them to, to do sustainable fishing in this area. So that's, that's what we are doing now in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So we want to know something more about this resort. Is it uh, far from the place where you are doing organic family or tell us something more uh, like it's open to people to come and stay there or uh, just tell us something more about that? Yeah, this resort is uh, maybe two hours by plane from Chiang Mai to here. It's southern of Thailand. Mm -hmm. And then this resort, it used to be the sustainable resort before and then they have bankrupt problem oh. and then we we bought from auction before they sell in auction we bought it and then now we plan to open it as a, a, a learning center and a resort in the same time in the back side will be learn, learn, learning center where people come to learn how to decide the land if we have a small land how can we make that land uh, produce enough to take care of us Mm -hmm. And then in another part of it will be the normal resort, but the resort will be a very sustainable resort. We mm -hmm. don't use plastic and then all the food, we get it around here and we have diving school here too. Mm -hmm. we because we have chalk well nearby, chalk well come here quite often so people mm -hmm. can dive and see them. So it's quite nice and peaceful resort here. So we we love it after we bought it. So now we, we try to work on it. We try to make, the idea is we don't want business to belong only one or a few family. We want business to belong to ma many people, as many as we can. So now we invite 6,000 people to buy the chair of this resort. So it's, I think it will be a new way of business that we want to do if yes. we, have profit, the profit will go to 6,000 people. But if one person own it, the profit will go to one person. So I think that's, that's not sustainable in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, that is something what I'll call something like a cooperative business and also what we call <laughs> social entrepreneurship, where it is something like a social enterprise. And uh, when did this resort start? When did you begin this? Uh, we just bought it this new year. <laughs> okay, this January. new year. Okay, yeah. so after that, we had the uh, COVID-19 lockdown, so it will take some time. Yeah, we, we will open it uh, in the end of May, I think, if after the government... Uh, okay with the situation, and then we, people can travel, we'll open immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anybody can come here. Mm -hmm. Anybody can come and learn or just stay is okay too. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, tell us something more about the Pun Pun Center. And I'm very curious to know why the name Pun Pun, does it have any special meaning? Uh, uh, pan Pan is pan, mean, pan. Okay. it mean, mean thousand varieties. It's okay. mean many things mixed together. Mm -hmm. we, we believe in diversity. Mm -hmm. So in Pan Pan is a place where, where people can come and stay together and learn how to be together. Mm -hmm. So in Pan Pan, we have um, many people from different places. Mm -hmm. it, we have Thai people, we have foreigner, we have Burmese, we have Western people, mm -hmm. we have gay, we have lesbian, we have every different kind of religious people come here. Mm -hmm. We stay together. And it's a place that where we uh, experiment to be together, how to make our life easy. So we create a new system of living together. Like there's no leader in these communities mm -hmm. and there's no rules. There's no rule. We just use meeting, but we don't like meeting too. Mm -hmm. So we have a meeting maybe one month or two months, one time or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it makes, I think to not, to not have uh, 
discipline, no, no discipline, no rule, no leader. It makes everybody become a leader. So this part, I think, is very interesting way of learning that how to manage without managing. So it, it works so well in the last 17 years. We never have problem here. It oh. works well. And then we, the main thing, the main aim of this place is to do seed saving. Okay. That's the main aim. So people come here and work together. Mainly we grow vegetable saving seed and mm -hmm. give seed for free to anybody who want it. That's, that's the main aim. Yeah. Okay. So, so now I, we have about 20 people stay together okay. here. Quite, quite, quite a, a lot. Quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. uh, what is the seed saving? Can you explain a little bit more uh, to our audience and participants who are mostly from the city and maybe uh, do not, we do not know what, what is seed saving and why is it important? So can you tell us something more about that? Why we have to do seed saving is, yes. uh, is because of, I'm a farmer. I grew up as a farmer. So I know... I noticed that there's a lot of seed disappear. Hmm. When the seed, many variety of vegetable or fruit that I used to eat them when I was a kid, now all of them's gone. Hmm. So the variety of seed disappear. Like when I was a kid in my village, we have many variety of rice. In the whole country, we have more than 20,000 variety of rice. Hmm. But now in the whole country, we have only 200 varieties that people still grow it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it disappears a lot. And then we, we lost a lot of local seed that we used to have before. And then now most of the seed, I can say like a 90, 99% of the seed in the market now is come from hybrid seed from the company. Yes. Yes. It's a few company who own the seed. Mm -hmm. The seed is food, food is life, but seed is not in our hand. But seed is in the hand of a few companies. That means we don't have uh, freedom. We, our life is in the hand of a few companies. So that part, I think, is quite scary to think about it because the seed from the company, the price rise up every year. Every year, the price rising up. When I was a kid, like a watermelon seed, we never buy it. We, uh, we never buy seed when I was a kid. But now the price of seed is more than, I think, maybe 1,000, about uh, 50, 50, 500, about $500 per mm. one kilogram. It's so expensive. So I, I don't know why this thing happened. And then I think it's not secure for us anymore as a farmer. As a farmer, we have to spend more than 60% of our investment on seed, fertilizer, and chemical. That means every time when we grow something, we need to give 60% of our investment to a few companies all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's not secure. Why we lost our seed? So now I try to bring it back. And then the seed that the company develop it, they make it so weak. It's not last very really long. Week. They need more chemical fertilizer. They need more hormone. They need more water. They need more care. So when we grow hybrid seed, we need to work more than normal. So it costs more money for farmers. I think this is the main cause of debt of farmers. When we use seed from the company, we pay always pay more. But when we grow our own seed, we spend less money. And then... Now, the seed disappear from farmer's hand, mainly. Most of farmers don't have seed in their hand. That, that means we don't have anything secure in our life. We just depend on a few companies. Now, I think we will have freedom when we have seed in our hand. Seed is happiness. Seed is food. Seed is life. But when we have no seed, that means we have nothing. So I think saving seed is, is the most urgent thing, the most important thing that we have to do now before it disappear more than this. This is the main reason that we want to save seed. Right. So this is actually an example of the corporations capturing uh, what belongs to the people. This is something what we can call corp uh, corporate capture. Is that, uh, is that so, Joe? Is it true? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, I, I, the seed is a weapon now. Mm -hmm. Before that, the colonized system, 
they send the big war ship, they send the, the army to take over each country. But now they don't do that anymore. They just send seed to that country. Like in, in the past, they send, uh, they, England, they occupy India. They can occupy only Indian country, but they cannot occupy Indian people. But now when they send seed to India, they did not care about to occupy the country, but they care about how to occupy everybody in India. So when they send seed to us, that means we need to pay everything. So we don't know that we are slave. We are were occupied now, but everybody need to send money to them. So this is the most uh, worry thing for me that I think we should not live in this situation. Mm -hmm. And have you seen the results of it during the past so many years you have been doing this work? Uh, how has uh, seed saving helped you? Uh, it has increased your yield or just, just share that with us. How is that uh, helped? How after that? we save the local seed, indigenous seed more and more, and then we try to develop them more, to propagate, to develop them in the way that we want it. Mm -hmm. Many of them, they can increase yield. Mm -hmm. It depends on how we want to develop them too. The main thing is we need to have the indigenous seed so we can develop the indigenous seed into the kind of seed that we wanted. So now some of our friends who develop rice variety, so he developed rice that have more yield than the commercial rice that they have now. And they spend less money to invest in growing that rice. So I think farmers have ability to develop the variety of plant that we want to grow. Because when we develop it ourselves, we spend less money and we know what we want. But when the company develop it for us, they just want to develop the plant to make it weaker and weaker so we can rely on them more. Rely on chemical, on hormone or anything from them more and more and more. And then we need to rely on seed from them. But when we develop ourselves like this, I think it's a lot easier and, and better. Different places, we need different variety. Diversity is security. So we need to have diversity. We should not grow only one variety of rice all over the country just to export. But we need to have many variety. Each area, rice, they love different climate, different air, different uh, water, different soil, different nutrition. So the taste different, the smell different, everything different. To have different plant in, in different way is security. Because if something happened in, in one variety, another variety can survive. But like in Thailand now, most of people grow jasmine rice. If jasmine rice have a problem, most of farmers will bankrupt immediately. Because they just rely on one variety. But if we grow more variety than this, if jasmine rice have problem with disease, with something, another variety is okay. That's security. So I think this is the very important thing to think about it. So it's unity in diversity, not only in people, but also in food crops, also in the variety of rice. So there has yeah. to be a unity in diversity. Uh, Joe, all that you are growing on the farm and uh, uh, is it uh, used, is it consumed or uh, do you sell some of it also to make the, every, is something it economically viable since you are growing such good varieties? Uh, in, in Pan Pan yes, in Pan Center, Pan. Yes. The, the aim is just to produce seed, to save okay. the indigenous okay. seed and produce okay. them. And then we give away for free. We did not make any money from, from uh, farming there. But I have another farm that we grow for business, okay. uh, grow for sale, mm -hmm. and that that another place that have more more income, okay. so they they can survive in that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, because that that is a good economic uh, activity also. Uh, yeah, and others also. So mm -hmm. I just want to tell our audience that since this is more of a conversation today, we are having with Joe. So please, uh, uh, the question and answer session continues along with the dialogue. So please raise your virtual hand if you want to ask any questions or type in your questions in the chat box, because do not wait 
uh, for the talk to end because this is a never ending conversation it will go on and <laughs> anybody who has any doubts uh, please uh, just uh, unmute yourself or type in the chat box uh, meanwhile jo i also wanted to know something i had heard that uh, people are making their own houses there at the fun fun center so can you explain something about that because uh, you are actually talking of something like a do it yourself living do everything yeah. yourself and live so can you elaborate on that yeah because uh, when i was kid house housing is not a problem for anybody because when people married and then they want to start a new family they just get her some friend and then cut the wood and make a house easily together but when we start to use the word develop or progressive most of people cannot build a house anymore now a house become a big problem for most of people in the world even they have land even they have some money but it's not if it's not enough they cannot build a house why something used to be simple and easy for everybody for many hundred year many thousand year why is become a problem now i think we develop into the wrong way so to come back to think about our own shelter i think it's very important thing so i come back to think about how can we make our own house easily if we don't have money how can we make a house i start to build my own hut with bamboo in the first time i think bamboo is quite nice and easy too but it's not last really long because the bugs eat them i don't know how to treat the bamboo at that time but when i start to learn how to build with mud mud house is so easy and we can make it nice also so mud house is so easy and faster than bamboo house because if we work only one hours per day to make bricks to build a house one hours per day is not more than three months you can get a house and then you spend money as as you want if you want fancy thing you can buy more fancy thing and spend more money but if you want something simple you can use the material in the area and even some people build a house with a few maybe 10 dollars or 20 dollars they can make a house that cheap so mud house is something simple and easy we can build it everywhere because everywhere we are we have mud we have clay we can use it but i did not use build only mud house because i think about we need to develop ability of human how can we make ourselves be able to help ourselves about shelter in different uh different way wherever we have what we are we can build a house in anywhere so i start to build a house from straw bell straw bell house i build a house from old tires they call earth chip i build a house from cardboard box uh mixed with uh, cement a little bit so i think wherever we are we can build a house like a bird wherever the bird live they can build a house from anything around them so they don't have hammer they don't have saw they don't have anything but they can build a house everywhere why human cannot be like that when we are we are clever than animal so now we build from many things soon i think about to build a house from a plastic bottle because we have so many plastic bottles everywhere so i think about that in the future near future so now mud house spreading quite fast in thailand now because people can build easily they don't need to be skilled person anybody can build mud house the youngest one is nine years old three of them can build their own house easily with them by themselves the oldest one is 60 uh, 73 years old man he built his own house by himself with mud so i think to have a house it it's just something easy for everybody if we brave enough to do it. if we want to do it we we can so whatever we have is fine we can build it 
I think the 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 sound is really loud here. I try to move somewhere else a little bit. Yes, that, that, <laughs> I cannot go very far because the signal is uh. Okay. Not, okay. No. No. That's okay. We we'll uh, manage. We we'll, we we'll live with that background noise. No problem. No problem. Uh, okay. Can you hear it? Yes. 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 We we, we can hear you clearly. So that's okay. Uh, okay. And we can see the yeah. beautiful trees in the background also. So, <laughs> so uh, that is great. You make it sound so easy, you Joe. Can see the the ocean there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you make it sound so easy to build your own Sorry? house. You make it sound so easy that you one can build their own. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it. We could never it, imagine. It's it. really. It's, it's really easy mm -hmm. when we play with the kids. They can build it themselves. So yes. I think it's it's very fun when we work with the kid. The kid never think that they can build a house, mm -hmm. but only six seven days they can make a house by themselves. I think it's that's very interesting. Right, it, it to is. see the the kid exciting. <laughs> right, right. They have right. their own house. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Stuti Khandelwal. Uh, so I would like Stuti to ask a question and then Zehra Fati from Family Planning uh, Association of Iran, she would like to say something. So first Stuti, okay. please ask your question. Um, hello, sir. So I wanted to ask, so um, in these areas like the resort and the pandemic center, how do people with disabilities accommodate in there? I, sorry, I cannot. And uh, cannot uh, hear very well. Yeah, yeah. she's saying, how do people with disabilities can, can they uh, live in the uh, in the Panpan Center, and how can uh, they accommodate themselves? Those who have disabilities. Oh, hmm. oh the the people in Panpan is 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 like a is a community. We live together. We help each other in everything. So we. Uh, I try to find a spot where I can have mm -hmm. a good. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, let me see. Okay, it's better. So, people live together, about 20 people, but we work together and eat together and do everything together. We don't have personal belonging there everything become belong to everybody so when we have income income we go to the the community fund and anybody can use it need anything they just take money from the community without uh get permission from anybody because there's nobody to give you permit so it's a kind of community that we we help each other. It's like a family, but it's quite a big family. So when people have kids in there, we don't send kids to the school. We teach them at the farm. And then when you got sick, we have uh, people who have some knowledge to help about healing there. That uh, if they cannot help, we can go. We can use the money from the community fund. So anybody who lives there will be taken care of very well. So mainly, we don't feel uh, we don't really don't want to go anywhere else. So so far, it it worked very well. Is that okay. is that the answer yes 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 uh, we have a question from a uh, comment as well as question from zahra fati who heads the family planning association in iran and she says all oh. my life i associated freedom with urban upward mobility but the covid 19 pandemic made us rethink if what we grew up believing is true or not i never thought having seed is freedom and security for a farmer. So thank you, Joe, for letting us realize the importance of seed today. Uh, uh -huh. And do you see some changes when the government relaxes lockdown and we come out of the COVID 
a 19 pandemic will it change the way we have been thinking uh, about food and about the, the whole way of living lives do you think there will be a change that there's a big change in thailand now because before that people just work hard to make a lot of money but now they have a lot of money but they cannot breathe because they're going to die mm -hmm. so many people think about i want to breathe i want to have food mm -hmm. many people have money but they cannot buy food because everything closed mm -hmm. so now is the time that people start to rethink about themselves more before that they think about money only but now we need to think about how can we survive so when they think about this they think about four basic needs food shelter uh, daily needs and healing or medicine so this thing this four basic thing is the base of life so many people come back now a lot of people contact us they want to come to to the workshop with us how to uh, learn how to make these four basic needs by themselves easily so now after the COVID-19 stop we're gonna be very busy with training all the time because so many people want to quit their job. Now, I think most of people move out from Bangkok to their hometown. I think more than 20% of them will not go back because when they came back home, they start to do gardening. They grow many things, whatever they want to eat, they grow them. And then oh, it's only two months, they have food, they have everything a lot. So why they need to go back to work in the city and don't have enough to eat again. So this part, I think, is create a big change in people's mind. Now people think about natural resources more. It's more secure than money. Because some of Thai people who live in America, live in Europe, they have a lot of money. But the problem is they cannot go see the doctor because there's not enough doctor to take care of people in America. So they want to come back to Thailand because we have enough doctor here. So they start to see that money is not solution, but here natural resources or relationship or friendship or community, something like this is more important than money. So this is the big change that I noticed that people contact me more and more now. They mention a lot about this topic, about security in our life is food. Uh, and then natural resources that we need to have. So to invest our income, our money to propagate natural resources is not a lot. And then it doesn't take too long, but even last so long after that. So this part, I think many people come back to think in this way more and more. What inspired you to leave Bangkok and uh... Uh, established the Pan Pan Center. Can you share something about that? Some now you are saying uh, COVID nineteen. Uh. <laughs> that is that is one reason why people may not uh, want to go back, seeing what the situation was. But what inspired you uh, to leave your Bangkok life? For me, yes. For me, it's suffering to be in the city. Before that, I grew up in the country, in the remote country. They said you are poor because you don't have money. It's true, I don't have no money. But if you want to be rich, you need to go to Bangkok. When you go to Bangkok, you can make a lot of money. So I went to Bangkok. They said, there's no poor people in the, if you are diligent enough, you will not be poor. So I went to Bangkok. I worked for seven years in Bangkok. I never have day off for seven years, but I never have enough food to eat. I still eat a bowl of noodle per meal or one dish of fried rice. It's not enough for me, but I cannot eat more than that because I got very small amount of money per month from the, my, my work. So I start to think when we work hard, why we cannot have enough to eat? Where is our labor cost go? We work hard, but we don't have enough to eat. We don't have a good place to stay. Why humans have to live like this when the world is so big, when the food's everywhere? This is uh, the reason that makes me think about my hometown. I never hungry when I was a kid. 
I was nine years old. I'm the person who catch fish to feed the whole family. I'm, I'm the person who looking for food to feed the family for many years. But when I was in Bangkok, I work more than eight hours per day, but I cannot feed only myself. So I think this is very wrong way of thinking. This is a wrong way of the structure in the world. How can human hungry in the middle of the most fertile world? The, this world is a very fertile planet. How can we hungry here? We have soil, we have plant, we have water, we have everything, but we don't have food to eat. We starving in the middle of fertility. That's, just, that's, that's something is unacceptable for me. That's why I feel like I cannot live in the city anymore. I need to go back home. I need to produce a lot of food and have food to eat. I don't have money. It's okay to not have money. It's okay to be poor, but it's not okay to be hungry. It's not okay to don't have food to eat when we have a normal body, when we stand on the land, any land, even I have no land, I can use anybody land to grow things. So after I think like that, I went back home and I start to grow food in a small area, not very big area. I just spend 15 minutes per day to water the garden and another 15 minutes to bring them to the market and then pick them to eat. One hour, uh, half an hour per day every day. I have enough food to, see, to feed six people in the family. And I still have income every day, more than I work. I work in Bangkok at that time, eight hours per day, I got 100 baht. But when I went back home, I work only 30 minutes to take care of the garden and then bring the vegetable in the garden, in the basket and walk to the village. And I came back in five or 10 minutes with another two or 300 baht per day. So that opened my eye immediately. Why we have to work eight hours per day and not enough to eat? When we can work only half an hour and we can have enough to eat and can feed the family. So I think the main thing is we were trained to think in the wrong way. We were trained to grow cash crop. We were trained to grow only rice. We were trained to grow only cassava. We were trained to grow only corn to sell and use that money to buy food. That's not, that's too, that's not good way to think about it. Why we need to go around the bush like that? Why we don't go straight, just go to the food directly. So when I went back home, I grow more than 50 variety of vegetable or plant in very small area, whatever we eat, we need to grow them. And then five chili, five eggplant, five papaya, five long bean, five uh, cucumber, everything more, not more than five, but more 50 variety. So when we have many variety, we don't eat the same thing every day. We always change something. And then only one chili plant, we cannot eat all of them because it's spicy. So we have to sell the rest of it. And then we make income. When we start to work without investment, we invest only labor, but we did not invest money. So whatever we sell, we maybe sell cheaper than in the market. But all that is our net profit, net income. So I can deposit 200, 300 baht per day, every day, every day. So I can make money in this way. So this is, this is what I think it's interesting to think that the way human think now is, is wrong. We have the crisis in thinking now. At that time, uh, did people think you were not doing the right thing? I, did you get support from your family? And did your friends think that you were doing something wrong by leaving the city life and trying to experiment with this? Now things have changed. Now you have got many people to think your own way. But at that time, was it difficult to convince people? In the beginning, most of people think I have some mental problem <laughs> because I don't do like other people. So when I, uh, when I first do the gardening, I don't use chemical. So I have to pick up cow dung on the street in the village. People said, oh, he read too much book. He studied too much. And then now he has some mental problem. 
he just collecting cow dung every day, every morning in the village. So the whole village think I'm crazy. I have some mental problem, but I don't feel bad about it. But the person who feels sad, who have problem, is my mother, because people came to her and they always talk with her about me. How is your son? Is he better? That's the question people ask my mom. So she feel very sad about that, because people start to say that I have some mental problem, and she start to believe like that. Uh, but for me, I think, oh, I did the right thing. I have no problem. But only villagers have problem, because to pick up cow dung's in the village and then make compost myself, it's a good thing. It's good way. This solution for many problem in the village. So I did a good thing. People say that I have problem. That means the whole village have problem. So in the whole village, only me who are normal, that make me feel so proud of myself. So this is the way I think at that time. Uh, but after three months, my garden start to look green, and my mother start to change her thinking after that, because she stopped buying thing from the market every month. We, she have to make money. She tried. She have to go work somewhere to save three thousand baht per month to buy food to feed six people in the family. But after three months, she went to the market. She came back with nothing in her hand because the vegetable in my garden is more beautiful, more fresh, and more variety than in the market. So she start to deposit three thousand baht per month every month. And after that, she smiles to everyone. Anybody say anything bad to her? She said, "Oh, I don't care, as long as I can deposit three thousand baht per month." So, my mother changed her mind, her thinking completely after that, without me talking anything to her. So, so that's that's the way it happened. I think many people who change my life like me have the same, have very similar experience. Most of them have the same thing. Like the family is the first group of people who are against you, and after that, neighbor or friend will say, "Oh, you're wrong. You're stupid. You make mistake." Uh, so many people say many things, but at the end, they need to accept that. So this is one thing I think we need to be stable. We need to stand stable in our point, and then people will believe it, and then. We will success too if we don't change our mind. Just keep doing. Don't stop it. We will success. That's right, that's right. You're very, very inspiring, Joe. Because one should have faith in oneself, and if you have faith in yourself, then you shouldn't bother about what others are saying or uh, what they think about you. That's that. That's so very true. That's very, very true, Joe. Uh, we have a question. Yeah. <laughs> Singh. Abhay Singh, would you like to ask your question, please? Abhay. Yes, thank you. Uh, how are the small farmers affected by the genetically modified crops that are made by big corporations like Monsanto? Uh, for us in Thailand now, we don't have GMO plant allowed to grow yet, so I don't have experience about it. But if it come, I think it will not affect as much because. We are small farmer. We, in our group, we do a lot of training. So many people came to our training. They went back to do, they do their own farming in our way, and then they save seed. So we try to protect ourselves. We have seed fair often. We exchange seed often. So we have a event often to encourage each other to like. Support each other more and more, so we don't think it will be problem for us here. But in many country, I think it can cause problem too because they did not aware about the problem of GMO seed before. But for us we now, we we try to do a lot of training. We do three at least three or four trainings per month here. Each training we have more than hundred people to the training. Uh, so. We do a lot of education about uh, GMO seed or about uh, the 
the law or something like that. We do a lot of things like this to educate people more because when people understand it, I think they will help to protect everything that we have now. So I think small farmer to use GMO seed, it's maybe not worth it. Not, it's not worth it because it's more expensive, more expand on that thing. But to do to have your own seed and create our own market, have a farmer market, have a bis our own business here, I think is is better. So I think we learn how to create our own culture, our own business. We don't want to have many cluster of business. We don't want to have one food one company to produce produce food for many people in the country that's not secure for us so so now we we do a lot of proper uh, training about this now uh, uh, but joe i just wanted to add on to that what about countries who are promoting uh, uh, corporations like monsanto and uh, uh, gmo crops uh, genetically modified crops uh, Will it not kill the small farmers and the big farmers may be going in for that? So it, it may be a problem. And I think, of course, lot, there are a lot many representations against it, but some countries are still going forward with, uh, with it. I, I think the way we're doing now here, mm -hmm. we try to train people to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. Self-reliant is mean we don't grow cash crop. We don't grow food, uh, plant for sale only. We need to grow for ourselves first. We sh farmer should not be hungry. Farmer is the person who produce food to feed the world. But farmer don't have food to eat. That's not the right thing to, to be. So farmer have to grow for ourselves first. So it's small farmer, they need to use their small land to grow for themselves first. They should not grow only cotton. They should not grow only rice. They should not grow only corn. They need to decrease the rice paddy. For us now, we, if we have 10 acres to grow rice, now we will grow rice only half an acre or one acre only. Take care of it very well. We will have more than we need we have rice more than we can eat. But the rest of it, we grow vegetable, we grow fruit tree, and then we grow forest, and we dig pond. So we decide the land. That's what we, we do in the training. We train people to decide their land first. Because if they have 10 acres of land, if they grow rice, they have to grow rice all their life. But if they decide their land to go rice only one acre, they will work only two days or four days per year. They will have enough rice to eat the whole year. And they dig a pond, another half acres or one acre, they will have a lot of water. Whatever happened, they have their own water. And then they have fish, they have uh, anything in the water. And then the rest of it, it will be small area for gardening and the rest of it will be fruit tree and forest. Fruit tree and forest, you work less and less after three years, you maybe just take care of it a little bit. So fruit tree and forest, it create more income, but we invest less money on it. In the future, if we design our land in this way, we will work less and less, but our income will increase a lot more after that. So farmer need to change the way of thinking. They should not grow only one thing anymore. If they grow only one thing, that means they grow for other people. They did not grow for themselves because they don't eat one thing three times a day. So they need to grow whatever they eat and eat whatever they grow first. And leftover, they can sell. When they sell, they don't need to think about the big market. They don't need to think about supermarket or market in the city. But think about people nearby. If we grow not a lot, just to make it fit with our labor, our ability, and then we have enough to eat and we can sell some. And then we can have income that, that's a stable income that we can get it every day, every day, every day. So to design the land in this way, it helped many farmers change completely because they can pay off their debt easily after that. 
and then they have more saving a lot more after that because every year the income will increase a lot like uh, if we grow if we have right paddy field we make a dike in the field bigger than normal we have the dike like a four meters big on the dike we grow papaya we grow banana we grow uh, fruit trees there guava so on the dike make more income than in the rice field because the rice field you work a lot you spend a lot of money you harvest the rice and sell the price of rice always going down but the price price of the fruit when we have many fruit the price always going up so to think in this way is more secure for farmer as long as farmer stop growing catch crop or only a few kind of plant they change their mind to grow more variety i don't think farmer small farmer will have problem anywhere whatever happen we are secure whatever happen we have food to eat for sure so even covid 19 even the war happen even the uh, economics collapse we still stay at home and have food to eat this is the security so we need to think about this more and more now right thank you very much and participants we are just coming to the end of our uh, program today so please if you have any last minute questions or doubts please ask them now raise your hand or uh, type in the chat box meanwhile i have two questions already which i will take up uh, there is a question on the uh, some uh, audience on the facebook page uh, pirani suparak uh, thank you for your message jo what would be your suggestions to promote self reliance in urban cities because you are talking of a rural setup so what about urban cities yes i think self reliance is is important for everybody even in the country or in the city in the city you can be self reliant self reliant it does mean you have to do everything yourself self reliant mean rely on on each other the problem now is uh, we were disconnected from each other so city people don't know farmer so farmer grow food very hard but they sell so cheap and then when the food came to the city they have to buy food very expensive in the city that's why we were disconnected because there's somebody in the middle take profit from that thing so city people have to do what they love to do if you don't like farming don't try to do farming so do what you love if you love to be artist try to do artist if you do want to do business do business but you need to reconnect it with farmer with other people uh, connect with farmer you can connect personally or connect as a group as a co-op as a company or whatever is fine as long as we connect together and we can uh, exchange thing together or buy each other farmer need more help from city people if city people can buy food from them they can have income to develop their technique develop their way of making food in the way that safer and better so city people they can be self reliant by do what they love to do and connect with farmer farmer will delivery food to you at home and you just pay less than buy in the market to the farmer but farmer can get more than they sell to the market normally so just rely on each other more and more now we our company we try to be to reconnect people together we try to reconnect city people to people who make fish sauce who make salt who grow food who make coconut oil who make thing we try to reconnect people together now so even they live in the city but if they don't follow the fashion much just think about themselves more eat only food food that good for our health that mean good that you know where it's come from not good from the packaging and then you will have a good health you can have uh, a good connection with farmer on the day off you can go to visit farmer to help them weeding to help them 
feed the chicken, feed the fish. You can know where the food come from, especially if you have kids. Bring them there so the kid can learn. When people know each other, nobody wants to hurt each other. So they will produce the best food for you. So city people can be self-reliant in this way by connecting together. Self-reliant means rely on each other too. It doesn't mean you have to do everything yourself. If you have to do everything yourself, we don't call self-reliant. We don't call self-reliant system. We call isolation system. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Uh, there is one question from Rahul Sharma that is it a problem getting education for the children or health care for all those who are there, who live there at the center as you are living in rural areas? Is Has that been a problem? Uh, we, we don't have any problems so far because like... Uh, uh, education. We do homeschooling here. Mm -hmm. When we teach our own kids, they learn more than they go to school. Mm -hmm. Because the school, the kid did not learn thing much that they need to know. The school will teach only the thing that you will not use in your life. They train you to busy all the time with something not very useful. Mm -hmm. But when they learn with us, they learn everything here. They learn how to cook food. They learn how to uh, grow food, they learn how to do things, they learn how to use computer, they learn, they learn everything. So they're more ability for kids. Uh, they can develop different way more than go to school. So far we have no problem and many of them when they go, when they finish like a high school from us, then they go to university, okay. many of them have no problem. They very make very good grade in university. Okay. So for health is no problem too because when we live together like this we don't eat junk food because the kids go to school they need to eat pop soda, they need to eat snack a lot but the kids at our farm they don't know what is Coke or Pepsi or anything like that. They, we give them, they test one sip and then they throw away because at the farm they make juice by themselves they're collecting papaya they make uh, juice make drink by themselves, they make passion fruit juice, make things. It tastes a lot better than uh, junk food. Mm -hmm. Even snack, they don't eat snack here. They make best, the best cookie. Mm -hmm. They make their own cheese, their own butter, they make their own snack. So it tastes better than in the market. So that's why we don't have problem about health much here so far. Mm -hmm. If they have some simple problem, we have many people who can do massage, many people who know a lot about earth. Some people can do acupuncture. There are many alternative ways that we do here. So people help each other in this way. And as you were saying about food and junk food, I think that is the mantra these days that a lot of our illnesses and our diseases are because of the uh, wrong type of food which we are eating, particularly in the cities as you talked about packaged food. and. Uh, and I'm sure that will ref that must be reflecting on the health of the people when you are using such good organic and homegrown food. So that would re reflect directly on our health, I think. Yeah, it's, it's make the difference. Like a, the kids at the farm, they never go to a hospital. Mm -hmm. But the kids in the village, they always get sick every month. Many <laughs> of them go see a doctor every month because the food that they eat is totally different. We eat real food. But in the village, they eat fake food, like uh, the snack. Snack is nothing, just air. They sell air, like a potato chip. Just air mixed with oil, sugar, MSG, and then preservative or artificial smell and taste. So potato is so tiny. One package, if you squeeze them very tight, it's only one tablespoon only. So you don't get nutrition from that much, but you pay more money on it. So that's why we have health problem. We eat something is not food too much in our daily life. That's the main problem. Isha Garg has a question. Isha, would you like to ask? Isha Garg? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, afternoon. ma'am. Uh, I'd like to know that can similar self-reliant lifestyle be extended to healthcare? Like you mentioned, Ayurveda and acupuncture. 
so apart from that anything else that could be done in this in this way thank you i think it can apply in everything about healthcare is is we we have a lot of network in thailand that we do alternative healing in thailand so we help each other a lot so if you go to see the doctor it's a lot of money you have to spend every time but when you come to the network we just help each other more and more and more so when we live in as a community many people we can anybody who interested about acupuncture we can send them to learn acupuncture and they came back and they can do acupuncture at the farm massage is one thing is incredible good massage when you have back pain when you have muscle pain or uh, some tired after you get massage you feel good immediately you don't need medicine many cases you don't need medicine medicine but you can help yourself easily and i think when we learn about our body more we can help our body ourselves easily without spending more money like for example i use a lot of water for healing because before that i used to have ulcer chronic ulcer stomach ache for a long long five years i went to the hospital for five years because of my routine is not normal that's why this uh, chronic ulcer lasts so long but when i start to drink five glass of water in the morning every day only five day my pain is gone after that until now more than 30 years never come back so five glass of water in the morning before everything it help a lot so i use that for many people so far it works so good so we don't need to go see a doctor just to have also we don't need to take medicine just glass of water five glass of water so i think there are so many some simple thing like this that we need to learn to practice to use so we can know that which one work well and then if we start to experiment to take care of ourselves and we get sick often and often we start to understand our body better and better and better and then we know what happened next time that help a lot but the problem now the system they don't want us to know what happened with us they want only doctor to know so whatever happened you need to see doctor every time you see doctor you did not learn anything about ourselves so i think learn to take care of ourselves is very important thing some tiny thing try local wisdom first try uh, alternative way first when we try we learn we understand immediately it work or not work every time we try we will understand it work or not work so when it work we acc accumulate this knowledge more and more and then we can help ourselves more and more in the long term so healing is need to be alternative way we need to support alternative way on healing more and more because we don't have enough doctor for sure in the world because so many people in the world we need to train each people become a doctor but we don't need to train people to see doctor every time when we have problem i think it's important to think about self reliant self reliant on healing is important exactly so i think we have already overshot the time by 15 minutes but just one last question jo yeah uh, yours is not a counseling center pan pan is not a counseling center it is basically about farming and growing food for oneself but i have heard from many people that some who came there it was like a stress buster for them and they felt happier from inside once they spent some time at the center <laughs> how did you manage that how did you manage to do that i think the problem is the way of life in the world is wrong so when people live in the normal way of living is a lot of pressure is is not the right way to be that's why people have a lot of depressed depression is spreading everywhere people have so much problem so worry have so much fear but when they live in pan pan for a few weeks 
they start to know that, oh, there's so many simple things like this. Why I keep thinking in this way for so long? It's so easy. I can change it like this. It solves the problem immediately. So I think that way is, is, uh, it makes people change their mind. And then they, they solve their inside problem quite a lot because of the way of thinking change after that. And then another thing is to use physical body. That part, I think, is very important because normal life now, we did not support people to use physical body. We look down on people who use physical body as a poor or uneducated people. We look down on farmer or labor or uneducated people as a poor or stupid people. But actually, we need to make physical body and mental or mind, make it balanced. We need to use both sides to make it balanced. So to live in Pan Pan, we use a lot of physical body. And in the same time, we use mind, use thinking. And then we think about happiness, have fun, have to learn about how to enjoy ourselves too. So this thing it make life more, more secure, more balanced. So that, that's why people can heal itself easily in this way. Right, right, right. Very rightly said. And even the World Health Organization recognizes that uh, uh, health is overall well-being, not just of the uh, body, but of the mind. And both, both have to be healthy uh, in order to be well. And, and that is what I think uh, you are conveying or your center is conveying to the people. And uh, inadvertently, they improve their mental health without uh, even realizing that. But they feel, and many of them have said that they, had, they felt happier and de-stressed uh, after spending some time there. Mm -hmm. So with this, we come to the end of today's discussion. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Joe, as well as Nong. Both of you found time to be with us today. And we will meet again on Friday, May 8th to interact with Maxaze awardee, Dr. Sandeep Pandey. Bye till then and stay safe. And once again, sincere thanks to Joe. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.